All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about a legendary knife that has been resurrected and why you should purchase this. In addition to this, as a part of the why you should purchase this or the why to this knife, we're going to be comparing it to massively expensive knives. We're going to be comparing it to its closest cousin, and we are going to be taking a look at the Mora 840 Clipper. Now, I've mentioned this in a few other videos talking about why this is the best bushcrafting knife that you can buy to this date, like at this current po point in time. But this is, of course, the Mora 840 Clipper. And I figured that it would be worth talking about since this knife has seemingly been resurrected. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the 840 Clipper, I have previously done videos about this knife. I've talked about everything you need to know on this knife. I did that a couple of years ago. This was one of the first knives I kind of that little series on and I did that video and it is now kind of hopefully I think changed or reverted um, or at least you know altered and in that video I mentioned at least at the current time to all indications this knife was discontinued in 2011 being fully replaced by the Mora Companion. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit like a little bit of a comparison and contrast to these knives in this video and to some competitive options but as I have alluded to this knife has since come back from the dead or been resurrected and I am now seeing 840 Clippers for sale um, on Knife Center, Amazon of course, um, Blade HQ has a special um, what is it, Dessert Warrior version of this. And while it's not my like favorite version, this is a, an, that is an 840 Clipper that has been modified with different colored handles and of course a fitting Desert Warrior sheath. And not really um, a huge fan of that knife per se, but it, it is that Desert Warrior has kind of shown that the 840 is being resurrected and made by Mora. Now, the cool thing about this knife is that it is a budget absolute win. Now, another thing kind of to talk about and to kind of allude back to the everything you need to know, this knife is not necessarily, or I'm not 100% clear when this knife became available or when this knife was first released. It is somewhere in the 1980s because this very knife, not this one exactly, but this model, the 840 Clipper, was shown in pictures in the very awesome book by Morris Kohansky, Bushcraft. He was pictured in several instances using this knife to carve and create different things. Of course, Moore's was a huge proponent of the clipper unofficially. Um, he used it extensively in his um, bushcrafting classes at Karamat Wilderness Ways. So this is a very well-proven bushcrafting knife, especially for, at least back in the day, it's sub $10 price point. And even to this day, you can find these on Amazon for around $18. And I'll be doing more videos talking about this knife and its brother, the companion and its other brother, the 511 um, craft line in coming days, but I figured it would be worth talking about this knife, going over it, and just, like I said, really going over why this thing is such a win. Now, for this knife, for those who don't know, like I said, it's a super cheap knife. It has a great track record. Many a solid bushcrafter has used this. Morris Kohansky was one of the first to adopt it. Of course, um, trying to remember his name, the guy who made 98.6 degrees. His name escapes me at this moment, but he is a more of a desert survivalist. He also wore one of these and a Mora Classic around his neck for decades. And these are just overall super well-proven knives. And while they are not full tang, they're about a half tang knife. So the tang goes to about where you can see on my, or where you see my finger. And so these are not necessarily the most durable knives out there. But in my opinion, realistically speaking, I have batoned this knife. I have put it through its paces and I would say unless you are batoning through bricks or you know trying to actually get this knife to fail most realistic bushcrafting tasks that require light duty batoning feather sticking in such um, kinds of activities within the scope of this blade length because this is a 3.9 inch blade so this is not gigantic by any means it goes just past my um, palm as you guys can see there so it's not a particularly large blade but it, it's still very functional so like anything within this range is probably going to be able to be tamed with this knife now do keep in mind too it is also an incredibly thin knife it is just under a tenth of an inch thick so it is pretty pliable as you guys can probably see there it has some good bend to it but it is being made out of c100 which is a swedish basic basic equivalent to um, 1095 it is going to be very flexible and durable and not really um, like bend or break too 
or be a very low chance of bending and breaking. So overall, the Mora Clipper is an incredibly cool knife. Now, we're already five minutes in, haven't really talked about anything else but the Clipper. So let's jump into it. So of course, for those who don't know, the Mora Companion was essentially the replacement to the Clipper. It was designed to be its spiritual successor, but in my opinion, I actually like the Clipper for a number of reasons more. Now, the biggest advantage to the Mora Companion is that it is actually a four inch blade it is just ever so slightly longer it's very difficult to show on camera but it is actually in blade length terms just ever so slightly longer this is about the differential between the two hopefully you guys can see there so it is ever so slightly longer uh, the companion's blade however once again realistically speaking it's not really going to buy you much functional use now the biggest um, kind of thing that i think are based improvement to the companion is its sheath realistically and in fact my clipper actually lives in a companion sheath but uh, aside from that honestly the companion is basically a very similar knife the only difference is the companion is more expensive and the biggest thing i dislike about the companion is that when they went over it they went to this largely rubberized handle that is just devoid of any texture. Like it has some micro texture and being that both of these are rubber, they are both incredibly grippy, but this is kind of my biggest like dislike to the companion and the newer kind of Mora scene is that they went over to these like largely untextured rubber handles. Whereas if you look back at the classic companion, it has this kind of diamond texturing that ironically makes it kind of look cheap in my opinion, but it does really work. So you have a lot of the same grippy rubber that the companion has, but it is diamond textured on your clipper. So you're gonna get a lot better traction when holding this knife for that very reason. Now let's talk about some other competitive options. To be honest, when we're talking about this size, and this is around a sub nine inch OAL, on the Companion, it really opens up to a ton of competitive options. Things like the Winkler here, Blue Ridge Hunter, is one that's actually slightly smaller, but I think this is kind of the nice thing to actually have a Companion to compare because a lot of people will sit here and be like, you know, oh my, you know, $300, $400 knife, $300, $400 knife is just so much nicer, it's so much better. But when you look at it, honestly, like there's, a lot more size here than on a Blue Ridge Hunter. You can see that, I'll quickly equalize these guys. This is about how much longer the Companion is than the Blue Ridge Hunter. Now the Blue Ridge Hunter is an okay knife for what it is, but understand that this is a $365 knife, roughly speaking. Um, and so this is a lot more expensive than an $18 Companion. And the Companion is slightly bigger. And once again, too, you have a nice rubberized handle that is going to stay temperature neutral and is also going to be incredibly grippy. Now invariably the textured wood on this um, Winkler here does look cool but in my opinion still kind of arguable of its effectiveness. Other knives that are running in the similar range, we have a half face blades here. This is a um, Disaster Junior. It is actually a bit smaller than the Companion, as you guys can see there. Blade length wise is pretty similar, but handle is a bit shorter, as you guys can see. But once again, CBM 3V steel on the um, Disaster Junior. However, you know, if you are willing to overlook, the steel is higher performance, but then again, this is also close to a $400 knife. So your clipper is still bigger than it. And it's crazy in my opinion. Now let's look at some other knives here. This one is probably one of its closer competitors. This is a scrapyard knife company or basically Busey WS um, 1021 and you can see that once again very close in size to the clipper so the WS 1021 is slightly bigger and granted it does have a trailing point so it's a little bit of a different shape but once again this one's just out just barely outpacing it in overall size so you might get a little bit more functionality but this is close to a $200 knife so I will say when it comes down to the size of this, I feel like even myself, I sit there and I'm like, well, man, you know, I love the clipper, but it's just a really small knife. But then you actually put it up against some other competitive offerings and you realize that, dang, this thing is actually kind of, it can hold its own with its size. It's actually not that bad. And I think that's why a lot of people over the course of the year or years 
Um, a lot of like survival instructors and even survivalists have gravitated toward this knife because it really is at about a perfect size. And once again, for me, the diamond texturing handle really helps complete it because even when looking at a lot of other rubber handled knives, once again, even including other Moras, um, you notice that there's just a lack or a just a lack of diamond texturing or just overall texturing as a whole like once again this WS1021 is really grippy like the rubber is super tacky but it doesn't really have any texturing to it the companion super grippy but no real texturing to it even I find it funny the um, more Conspool kind of harkens back to this diamond texturing with its solid kind of hard plastic diamond texturing in the core now personally I do wish that with the Kunzbul, they would have made it all more, like grippy rubber, but the center kind of cores here are more hard plastic and the outer kind of darker um, orange here you guys can see is the more grippy rubber. So it is kind of reminiscent of this style, but this is entirely grippy rubber and these diamond texturings here are actually very, very tacky. Like it's hard for me to express how much force and like how much traction you get out of these. Can't really like show it properly, but rest assured it is actually pretty darn grippy. Now putting this up against the Kanzbul, Kanzbul comes in at roughly the same um, size as a clipper and honestly roughly about the same thickness. So when a lot of people sit there and they're like, oh, you know, this is a very thin knife, the companion here, it really, or sorry, the clipper, not the companion, is a really thin knife. It is thin, but it's actually not as thin as you might think it is. So like, or I should say that it's honestly, the thinness does not make it less durable. Even putting it up against something like the WS1021, it's about the same thickness as the 1021. Once again, about the same thickness as the um, Kanzbul. I believe the WS1021 and Kanzbul are both uh, 0 0.11 inches whereas this is 0 0.9 inches and so once again the companion 2 is also going to be the same exact thickness as the clipper because they are really close to the same piece of steel now the biggest advantage to the companion as i forgot to mention totally is that this has a more complete tang so the tang runs down to about here as opposed to about midway however like i said i really haven't found there to be a huge durability difference and once again all of the knives shown here um, except for maybe the disaster junior and the winkler to their credit um you know, they will break if you push them to some extraordinarily high level, but at the same time too, um, I think once it, once again, like drawing back to it, you know, if you push these guys to an incredibly high level and you try to get them to break, like if you're trying to baton this through a rock, okay, sure, it might break. But once again, realistically speaking, in survival practice, like actually batoning these through realistic pieces of wood that you find out in the wilderness, like they actually have a, a good enough um, durability that they're not going to fail. They're not going to break. Um, they are, they perform just fine. So in my opinion, you know, durability is something that like you look at, you might look at Joe X's videos and I do enjoy Joe X's videos from an entertainment standpoint, but even Joe X will tell you and has said in his videos that they're for entertainment purposes. Like he's absolutely trying to destroy knives and he will destroy the knife for entertainment purposes. These are not necessarily realistic examples of what you're gonna do out in the woods with a knife to affect wilderness survival. So once again, there are some knives that do fail at this type of um, testing, things like the Gerber LMF2, uh, but within reason, most of these knives and most all of these, like the Clipper, the Companion, are perfectly fieldable knives for um, wilderness survival. So in my opinion, I think the Clipper is a really hard knife to go wrong with. I think that this is absolutely one of the best bangs for the buck. And one of the coolest things, even if you don't have a Clipper, the reason you should pick one up is that they're super cheap, like that, that for one. And two, they have a lot of heritage. There's a lot of like so many people back in previous times really started off bushcrafting with these knives, started off wilderness survival with a companion or a Clipper, especially a Clipper. Um, 
And so these things just have such a cool kind of history to them. And once again, so many awesome survivalists have used these things. So it's kind of cool to have one for that heritage purpose alone. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed breaking down and kind of seeing some other survival knives thrown or bushcrafting knives, um, survival knives thrown in the mix to kind of show you and give you some size comparisons. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.